It's a Wednesday, so we get a chance to hear from Shane Steichen, talk about the Colts Bears, talk about the Colts Packers, talk about where this team is two weeks in, what the injury situation is, all that stuff. Here's Shane Steichen talking about the Colts. Shane, after coaching Justin Herbert and the old Zed Hurts when he was fairly young, um, what's the steepest part of the learning curve for a young quarterback like Anthony having gone through the process? I think just seeing different looks over and over again. There's so many different looks that come up in games. You know, within a game plan, obviously, you, you go into a game plan, uh, what you think they're going to do, and they might adjust it. You know what I mean? There's going to be different looks that you got to adjust to. And I think you guys have heard me say this, but I think with time, the more you play, the more you're going to see, and the more you're going to get better. Um, so that's that's the you know process through a young quarterback going through that. Did, did you see the light come on for Herbert? Oh, he started off like a house on fire, if I yeah. remember correctly. But did you see the light come on for him? I did. At any point? Yeah, I saw it probably. I mean, obviously the first game he played was that Kansas City game, knowing that he was going to start right before the snap, the kickoff. I remember that whole thing that happened. Uh, but he came in, he played well that game. Uh, and then he continued to get better. You know what I mean? I think we had four games into it, you know, he was rolling pretty good, four or five, maybe six games into it. Um, but, yeah, he had a hell of a rookie year. I think I heard you kind of say or suggest, like, he's generally making the right reads, which I think is one of the harder things for, for young quarterbacks. I mean, is that fair? Is that what you're seeing? I, I'll yeah. see you a couple of weeks back. Something. 100%. I mean, that's the thing. As long as the ball is going to the right spot, you know what I mean? I, and with anything, it just takes time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a process going through this thing with young quarterbacks. Uh, but shoot, he's a hell of a football player. We're excited we have him. Is that something that they tend to struggle with when they're young? Yeah, as far as like going to the Make right spot? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think too, as coaches, right, you got to do a hell of a job of helping them with the reads and stuff and not overcomplicate and half field reads. And there's all these different things. And whether you want to peer progress things, I mean, you go through that process to make sure he's comfortable with those things. Shane, with it, with it a win now league, is it hard to be patient and balanced? I mean, you need to win now. Yeah, I mean it is. It's this is a results league, and obviously we all want to win, no doubt about it. We want, I want to win. Our, our players want to win, um, and that's the goal. That's the goal. Obviously, we got to do a hell of a job putting a position to go make plays on all three phases. You know, all three phases: offense, defense, special teams. That's our job to get that done. Uh, the thing with Buck with he sort of demanding the attention. What's the update on Block Two? Um, he won't practice today, but we'll take it day by day. Yeah. Any update on Julian Black? Um, yeah, he'll practice today. Is the time of possession a stat you think indicates a whole lot? Gosh, it's a good question. I think when you look at it, sometimes the time of possession, you don't want it to be too crazy, you know what I mean? Um, but sometimes time of possession, you see teams that have it for 25 minutes, the other team has it for the other, and they still win the football game, you know what I mean? I think as long as you're scoring points and moving the football offensively, um, I think that helps for sure. Shane, I want to know if you could um, clarify just from the other day, some of us looked a little confused. You talked about the uh, the third one pitch play. Mm -hmm. um, just could you clarify kind of why was Jonathan Taylor not on the field on that play? Honestly, on that play, it was a speed option play, and we we're pitching off end, and we felt good about it. And obviously, they covered it. That's on me, and we were going to go for it on fourth down and put JT on fourth down. And obviously, we had to kick a field goal because we lost yards. When it comes to running back playing time, is that something that yeah, Andre deals with in a game, or do you like to set that out? Yeah, we talk about that through the week and stuff. Um, but obviously, we got a lot of faith in Trey too. We don't want JT in there every single play. You know what I mean? He's gonna, he's gonna, it's a long season. You know what I mean? So Trey's a good runner. He did some good things for us. Um, so he gets some reps too. Do you feel like you have a third down back, or do you find that? Um, I think we're good. I think Trey does a good job. I think JT did a good job. I feel good about the backs. Uh, when we studied the tape, I mean, what what was your big takeaway on the receivers? Um, biggest thing, obviously, we, we had a few drops there, you know what I mean? Um, and we just got to get on the same page, you know what I mean? That's repetition, obviously, and we got to get that thing going. You know what I mean? It's early in the season, but we got to get that going, and we got to start it this week. We got to get going. If Josh is, is able to be back this week, how does he help Anthony with some of those like easy access throws? From yeah, season? I think they had a good connection last year, you know, um, obviously, and, and getting that going and the easy completions there. Um, but they got a good connection, and so it'll definitely help having Josh back if he plays. Shane, all the Matt Davis is a bit left of late. Anything fundamentally with that? Um, I always say I'm not a kicking coach, um, first and foremost, uh, but we're working through those things. Is it really challenging working with a quarterback who's such a good athlete that he can do things wrong but get the right result? Does that make sense? Yeah. Like a guy who can throw off his back foot but kind of zing it, and you, you don't want that necessarily, but 
Yeah, I think, you know, fundamentally, you just keep working through those things. You know what I mean? Um, he's going to make some big time throws, off platform throws. You see it around the league. Guys do that all the time. I and mean, when, when the pocket's clean, obviously, you want to be in balance. You want to have a good base. You want to be on your target line and hit those things. But sometimes you got to have some off platform throws. How has the pocket been as far as clean goes? How do you, how do you feel about it? It's been pretty good, really good. I've been really impressed with the offensive line. Uh, they've been doing a really nice job protecting for them. Um, I think uh, they've been doing a hell of a job in the run game, too, as well. And there's again, some stats, and I don't claim to understand them, but there's clean pocket percentage. Richardson is near the, near the bottom of the league, that 42.9%. And again, I don't claim to know what that means. I just saw it on the site, but I believe. Does that mean anything to you? I don't know. Where, where does that stat come from? Do you think? It's I feel good about our offensive line. Yeah. So what, what do you think of the biggest uh, disconnect between AD? I guess. Frady Mitchell, I guess, how do you look at what happened? He's grown throughout his first two games. Yeah, again, it goes back. I mean, second game in the NFL. You know what I mean? Two young players, right? Two, you got to work through those things, man. So that's, that's, that's this league. You know, there's going to be ups and downs, and early on, you got to get the repetitions with those guys, and they'll start clicking. It's a focal point every week, obviously, but with Chicago style of defense, can you talk to AD or AR a little bit more about turnovers this week? Um, we always talk about it. I mean, that's always one of our keys to victory. It's all about the ball and the turnover battle, and we haven't done that the last two weeks. And obviously, we've got to do a hell of a job protecting the ball, and we got to get the takeaways this week. You didn't see if it cared too much about the turf in week one. Any update on like, the slipperiness? No, I mean, I always just tell the players to check their cleats wherever we go, whether we're in Lambeau last week or this week. Just always check your cleats. Make sure you feel good going into the surfaces. Well, I think it's, I mean, that is, I mean, as a quarterback too, and as a coach, right, you own it. Like, shoot, everyone looks at the coach, everyone looks at the quarterback and stuff, and it's good. It, it means something to them, you know what I mean? Everyone's frustrated when you lose. No one wants to lose football games. But again, I tell these guys all the time, man, it's a long season, man. Shoot, you could lose two in a row week eight and nine. We just happened to do it the first two weeks. You know what I mean? Now we got a hell of an opportunity to come back home and play Chicago. What stands out about their defense? They fly around pretty good. Um, got a lot of respect for Flus. Um, TJ Edwards was around him. Really good linebacker, really cerebral, really smart. Um, Sweat's a good player. Um, they are aggressive. They'll bring some pressures. They'll do some different things, um, some line movement. So we got to be ready for them. That's Steichen. Good news, I guess, that Josh Downs is likely to be back. We'll see who practices. If Julian Blackman is back this week, that would be a good thing. Can't tackle. You can't have 15 tackles again if you're Julian Blackman. you got to have other guys kind of fill that role. But the, the Bears are a beatable opponent. They're not good offensively. This defense ought to be able to do some business against an offense without any kind of personality, any track record of success whatsoever with Caleb Williams. The running game of the Bears, pathetic to this point. The defense, like Steichen said, flies around a little bit. This team's just got to be able to run the football, and Richardson needs to be able to hit the passes that are there for him to hit. That's what this thing is. If they can get there, they're going to beat the Bears.